exactly analogous to the left join, we have predictably another kind of join called the right join. This time the tibble on the right is going to take priority. Right? So if we take this example, we are going to have, uh, again we are joining the tibble on the left with the tibble on the right. Okay, so for the first two rows there is a match, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, perfect match. Now the 4 doesn't match, doesn't have a match in the uh, X table. Of course the 3 of the uh, X table also doesn't have a match on the Y table. But because we are doing a right join, the table on the right gets the priority and any rows on the right table that have no match in the left table still appear in the output. Okay, so once again the concept is just the same. This time we see that 4 Y3 appears in the output but 3 X3 does not. Okay, so once again other things are just the same. X is the left table, Y is the right table because uh, you know if, if you look at the statement we are mentioning X first, we are mentioning Y next, therefore X becomes the left and Y becomes the right and we are joining by key and as before we see that 3x3 this time does not appear in the result but 4y3 does. Again because it's a right join and the table on the right namely y gets priority in the case of uh, when there is no match. Okay, So there's the other kind of outer join which is called the full join. right? With the full join both x and y have equal priority so any mismatches on either side will show up and therefore as you can predict 3x3 and 4y3 both show up but of course with Na for the appropriate values. We rarely use full joins. Most of the time we'll be using inner join and then we'll use either a left join or a right join depending on the ordering of the tables. Full join is rarely used but I'm mentioning it here just for completeness. Okay, so in full join, both and left, uh, it's basically the equivalent of both the left and the right join. Mismatches from both the tables are included in the output. Another kind of visualization that might help us to understand outer joins or in general all joins is by a when representation. Okay, so inner join as we already know, if you did an inner join of x and y, what you see in the output is only what is fully matched. That is the key occurs in the left as well as in the right. So only when it occurs in both do you see uh, the, the result in the, in the resulting table for matches. Okay? So if you have a left join, you're going to see all the rows for which there's a match plus the rows in which the first table, the table on the left, doesn't have a match. Right join is exactly the other way. You're going to see all the rows where there's a match and also rows belonging to the right table for which there is no match. Full join, you're going to see all the rows. Okay, So that's another way of visualizing it, uh, visualizing all kinds of outer joins. Okay, Now there are also scenarios when one table ends up with duplicates. right? So for example, here you see uh, the key 2 repeats. Okay, Of course, then you would say, why do you call it a key? It's not a primary key. But nevertheless, we are joining by the column called key, but the value is repeating here. Okay, So in that case, remember when you do a join here, you notice that you draw a line from here to here, line from here to here and that matches with both of these. right? So the, the 2 in the second table matches 2 rows and therefore it's going to this, uh, you know, x2, 2, x2, 2, y2, x3, 2, y2, you're going to see both of them here. right? Because uh, both of these rows match with this row and therefore both of them are going to occur in the output. Okay, So when one table has duplicates, obviously it's the, the values are going to repeat in the output. Okay, In this example, the, the tables are created using this particular code. Okay, Again here we say left join x, y because we are not using pipes. That's all. Sometimes both tables have duplicates as in this particular example here, right? So this, the key 2 repeats here, the key 2 repeats here as well, right? So notice that there are multiple matches that occur, right? So for this 2, it's going to match with both of these and this 2 also matches with both of these. So those two rows in this table and this table together create four rows in the output, okay? So again, that is something for us to think about. So if you use this way of visualizing the joins, 
then you'll catch everything that's going on right so for example here you see if you draw a line from here and you draw the lines from here notice that for this line there are two matches and for this line also there are two matches so totally these two plus two four rows uh, result in four output rows that come for the various combinations right so it's basically x2 y2 x3 y3 and then x2 y3 and x3 y2 all of them show up and of course x4 y4 also shows up because the key 3 is matching right so when you have duplicates the matching also works accordingly the code to create these two tables is right here okay so even though we are only doing a left join in this case we could have even said inner join because there is no case of a mismatch occurring so inner join left join both are going to give us the same results in this particular scenario okay so uh, again just to go back to the syntax right if you have the key columns that is the columns by which you are joining if they have matching names right so for example we can just do flight to uh, left join weather right and flights too remember we removed uh, one of the the our column I think we removed one of the columns so if you do this it's going to do a match okay since by is unspecified it is going to join by all the matching column names okay and the output will mention the columns by which the join occurred right so if you do this okay unfortunately if you join uh, for example flights with planes and if you did a left join you have to explicitly mention tail num because as I've already pointed out these two tables have yet another com common column called year but year means something different in the two tables right so you have to be very careful if you don't mention what you're joining by then the join functions will join by all the common columns now sometimes the common columns even though they have the same name they may have a totally different meaning and joining by them may not be appropriate so in this case we have to mention join by tail num even though the the joint column has the same name in both the tables because of extraneous columns which we don't want to join by we have to explicitly mention it okay now sometimes the columns have matching names but we are using a subset okay exactly like what we did here right we are using a subset of the columns we are using only tail num we are not using the other one okay so that's what we are doing in this particular example now what is happening in this case is remember there is a column called year in the uh, flights table there is also a column called year in the planes table okay now of course the output the joint result cannot have two columns both of them called year right that would not be allowed you can't have two columns with the same name in one table okay so because of that you see in the output it's coming out as year dot x x and year dot y okay so this x and y have been added by the left join function in order to disambiguate between the two columns which would otherwise end up with the same name right so again what we are seeing here is the result of the join after all the result of the join is a table but a table cannot have two columns with the same name and therefore it adds an x and a y here okay so tail num is not duplicated therefore tail num is going to occur only once it's the column by which we are performing the join that is not going to come twice but the columns with which you are not joining if they have the same name then it will automatically add x and y x it will add to the first table y it will add to the second table therefore year dot x x it belongs to flights two and year dot y belongs to planes okay so let's take an example of a query that uh, would use this list of list the details of flights flown using planes made before the year 1970 okay so explicitly I'm trying to refer to the year here okay so we might do something like this flights inner join planes of course we have to say by equals tail num right now we are interested in flights flown using planes made before 1970 so we might think to say filter year less than 1970 okay we, this might be our first attempt at uh, answering this question now this unfortunately will not work right because of what we saw from the previous slide we know that flights inner join planes 
produces this table right inner join or left join it produces this table okay and this table notice doesn't have a column called year it has two columns one is called year dot x the other is called year dot y okay so therefore if you look at flights inner join planes by tail num the result of this join does not have a column whose name is year and therefore this query year less than 1970 will fail okay so the of course the process is first join this and then do the filter okay but again as i have pointed out the join result doesn't have a column called year and therefore you get this error message saying error in filter input whatever forget that object year not found okay there is no column called year in the result of the join okay so therefore when we do the filter we have to be careful right we have to explicitly mention the filter and uh, you would do that by saying filter year dot y less than 1970 right because remember planes is the second table and therefore its year column in the output would have been called year dot y and therefore you would have to explicitly say here filter year dot y less than 1970 okay so that's that's what happened here okay now sometimes what happens is the names don't match you're trying to join by a particular column but the columns have different names in the different tables then the syntax you use is like this say flights to left join airports and uh, by equals you can say by equals or you can just say this you're saying c dest equals fa that is in flights to the column is called dest in airports the column is called fa right so we are joining by the column called dest in flights to with the column called fa in airports okay so you could if the names don't match then you can explicitly mention it like this right or alternately you, if you want to join by the origin then you will say origin fa okay so even if the column names don't match you can use this syntax to perform the join okay now sometimes you will have to join the same table more than once okay let's take an example here suppose we want to have uh, the details of the flights but instead of just mentioning the airport codes we want to also mention the airport names for both the origin and the destination airports right so therefore in order to do that you will have to join flights with first airports to get the origin name by saying by origin equals fa and then you will have to join it again to get the destination name so this time you'll say join to airports by destination equals fa right so what is happening is first we are joining flights with airports we get a resultant table that table we are againing jo again joining with airports this time by a different column by destination equals fa okay so in some situations it is possible that you may have to join the same table twice right so flights is being joined once to airports to get the origin it's being joined again to airports to get the destination right so the same table airports is being joined twice but of course by different columns right first time it's origin second time it's destination so this is also quite possible it it happens not of course since airports got joined twice obviously all of its columns are going to occur twice in the result right because when you first join flights with airports you got all of the columns of airport you join it again with airports you're going to get all the columns of airport again that is why you see here for every column of airport you've got x and y so name dot x and uh, lat dot x la longitude dot x etc etc and then again you see name dot y lat dot y longitude dot y etc etc obviously that has to happen since the resultant Uh, table coming from the join of all of these three obviously cannot have columns with duplicate names and so inner join function has to disambiguate by doing dot x dot y okay therefore if you want to list the details of all flights by including the name of the origin airport and the name of the destination airport we can extend this same code by a little bit and get something like this flights 
inner join airports by origin equals FA, inner join airports again by destination equals FA, and then only select the columns we want, name.x, name.y, right? This is the name of the origin airport, the name of the destination airport, and maybe the year, month, and day. We select whatever columns we want, and therefore we now see the flights, but this time we've got the airport names instead of just the airport code.